Okay, we're back. So here, here we go. Uh, sort of a testing and meter reading and kind of, you know, understanding of what's supposed to be where. Now in all cases, the best possible way to test is with a complete circuit. Okay, now that's not always easy because you have to unplug things. And depending upon what you work on, you may or may not have access to the terminal. So it can be a little dicey. Excuse me, it can be a little dicey. So let's go back to where we were, Rio stat. Remember, two terminals, and it's a variable resistor. And potentiometer. Okay, uh, it has three terminals and it's a sensor. Okay, so that's that's pretty consistent. Okay, schematic symbol looks like this: two wires and a variable arrow, and the potentiometer may look like this: resistor, two leads, and a variable arrow with a wire. So one, two, one, two. Three. Okay. All right. So, what are your expectations? Well, a couple of things. Um, the sensor, in this case, uh, is going to be um, changing the resistance with temperature or with oil pressure, but the voltage coming to the sensor should be 12 volts. So, whatever is coming to the sensor and then going back. You should have 12 volts here, and you should have, um, nope, should not have zero volts there. If this is installed, you should have something less than 12. So it should be 12 or less. Because what happens is that this variable resistor drops the voltage and changes the amperage. So um, if you're reading voltage, then you should see 12 volts coming in, 24, 12, whatever. And then you should see some number less than 12 um, more than likely, uh, coming out. And that's because this goes back to the meter, and the meter is the other resistor. So there's a resistor there, and there's a resistor there. And then as this resistance changes, the amperage changes, which makes that move backwards and forwards. There is a voltage drop here, but it's not really what's critical, um, at least not from understanding. Now, they, they work on the same principles, but they do different things. Um, so what, what, what can you do? Well, if you take it out of the system, okay, and you use a meter, then you should obviously be able to see a change in resistance if you put it on ohms. Then from here to here, you should see a change in resistance with temperature or PSI or whatever. Okay, you should also be able to see that change at the meter right here um, if, uh, if this is working and the meter's moving. So if the meter's moving, then this is obviously, you know, doing its job. So this is fairly straightforward. It's a resistor and you measure it in ohms and um, you should see a consistent uh, resistance across here. Um, and then if you change the temperature, change the pressure, you should see a change in resistance. So you could unplug this and hook your ohmmeter up and crank the engine and uh, you should see the resistance change. And the resistance in each of these can be pretty significant from anywhere from about 600 ohms up to almost 36,000 ohms on high and low. So it depends on which one it is. Pressure, not so much. Temperature, yeah. Okay, so anyway, this, this can be 600 at high temperature, 3600 at low temperature. And it just depends on the manufacturer and how they do it. But that's, that's how it should work. So if you have it plugged in, you should see voltage coming in, and you should have less voltage coming out. And you should have the same voltage here, here, which would mean there's no problem in that wiring. So 12 here, 8 here, 8 here, 12 here, 2 here, 2 here, whatever. If you unplug it, you should see a resistance, and if you heat it up or pressurize it by cranking the engine and watching the pressure change, then you should see the resistance change as well. Um, so summary. Sim symbol looks like that, two, two terminals, rheostat, 
two terminals, it's a variable resistor. Okay. The voltage coming to the sensor or to the light dimmer should be probably full system voltage. Okay, unless it's in the ground, in which case you just reverse this. Um, and then it has a resistance, and that resistance will drop a little voltage, so you should see less voltage over here on volts, and you should see the same voltage here, as you see there, coming into the meter, to the signal wire. And then, um, if you want to test it with a resist uh, with an ohmmeter, you can check for continuity, and you do not want zero ohms, probably, and you do not want OL ohms. Those are probably not right. You should see a resistance, and if you change the pressure, change the temperature, the resistance should change. Okay, that's pretty simple. Okay, now, potentiometer, a little different. Okay, so here's ECM. And let's say the ECM is sending 8 volts, and we have 0 volts to ground, so it comes out, goes to the potentiometer, throttle position sensor, whatever, and number 2 is always a signal wire. One, two, three. Okay. Well, the voltage here should be exactly the same as the voltage here. So if it's 8 volts here, it should be 8 volts here. If it's 0 volts here, it should be 0 volts here. If these two numbers are wrong, there's a problem on the side where the number's wrong. So in other words, if this says 6, there's a problem here. If this says 4, there's a problem here. And a problem in either of these two wires will definitely create a problem in the signal. So before you start assuming it's the sensor, you may want to check all the connections uh, in the system first and make sure that you don't just have a dirty terminal. If you have a dirty terminal, clean it, and I pretty much guarantee the problem is going to go away. Okay? So there's that. Um, it needs to be tested under load if you can, but not, it's not always possible. So what next? Okay, well, if you have it out of the, if you have it out of the system, okay, and you've got your three terminals here, and uh, this is kind of what it looks like usually. Um, one, two, and three. Well, if this is 5K, then you got pretty simple. From 1 to 3 will always be 5K. That never changes. 1 to 3, if it's 5K, it's 5K. And on the back of this, it'll probably say something like, you know, it'll have little tabs and whatever, and little doohickey things right there, and it'll say da 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 da, and it'll probably say 5K on the back somewhere. 10K, 5K, whatever. All right. Well, if you center it, believe it or not, there's a pattern here. The, cent uh, the center will be the flat spot. Will usually be down. So if there's a flat spot on this on this thing, it'll be down usually. And if it's a circle with a slot, the slot will almost always be vertical. But notice that it's vertical. So if it's vertical from one to two, is 2,500. And from 2 to 3 will be 2,500. Okay? And as you roll it one way, this number will get smaller and this number will get bigger. If you roll it back the other way, this number gets bigger, this number gets smaller. Okay, so that's how they work. You always test, this is the only time, now listen carefully, test on manual. Ohm range. And the reason is that if this passes the range on your meter, wherever that meter, let's say 300 ohms, which is pretty typical, then when your meter hits 300 ohms, the meter is going to burp. It's going to be going, you know, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, and at 300, What's going to happen is when it hits 300 ohms, it hits that range, and then this meter kind of goes, and then it jumps up, and it's going to be point point three one k. 
Okay. Well, when it jumps from here to here on range, on auto range, then people go, oh, look, I told you it's got a dead spot. Let's change the throttle position sensor. That'll fix it. We'll have them out in two hours. Well, two hours later, it ain't working. Okay, and that's because of this. Probably because of corrosion right here. You probably had a problem in these connections here. Those are pins and sockets, by the way. Um, so the burp, you get kind of a burp here where it burps and becomes, goes from the ohm scale to the K scale. This is on the ohm scale, this is the kilo ohm scale. When it burps, you get a jiggle, and you go, oh, see, it's broken, and it's not really broken. So what you do is you read the highest number you can, okay? You read the highest number you can, and then hit the range button. Boop, and when you hit the range button, Boop, it'll stay on the proper range and you get a good reading. Okay? Alright, so review. Rheostat, two wires, variable resistor, potentiometer, three wires, sensor, three wires. Okay? If it's a rheostat, then the voltage will usually come to it. That's the system voltage. This will drop voltage and reduce current because they work hand in hand. So either Voltage changes amperage and resistance changes amperage and amperage changes voltage drop. So, um, so you lose a little bit of voltage here, you come around the corner, you come back to the gauge, you ought to read the same thing here as you read here. If you don't, you have corrosion. Um, this should change with changes in temperature and pressure. And you can use hot water and cold water, boiling water, and, and that, there's a reason for that, by the way. If it's a temperature sensor, you can have a zero degrees, which is ice, and you can have a 100 degrees, which is boiling water. And these allow you to actually do a field test of a temperature sensor, by the way. Not so easy with pressure, but you can do a temp. Most manufacturers give you these two numbers. And this might be 36K, and this might be 600. Just depends. Okay, so voltage in, drops voltage, current drops, comes around the corner, goes into the gauge gauge moves because it's a motor, speed control motor, same exact thing. Uh, to test it out, you have a resistance, and the resistance should change smoothly from low to high pressures or low to high temperatures. If you see this erratic jerking kind of, you know, uh, maybe not. Okay, they should never be zero, they should never be OL. They can be anywhere from 600 to 36,000 depending upon a lot of things. And, and you always test on manual range. You know, potentiometer. Uh, potentiometer, measure voltage, three wires, it's a sensor, three wires. Um, the ECM or the dash will send out a signal, eight volts, 12 volts, whatever. The voltage at the ECM and the voltage at the sensor should be identical. The voltage uh, on ground on both ends should be identical. If this number is wrong, there's a problem on this side. If this number is wrong, there's a problem on this side. To test them, the amount that the potentiometer is is on the back usually. There are three tabs. There's a center slot. Either the flat spot will be down or the slot will be up. And if you center it, you should have the same voltage forever and ever from 1 to 3, 5,000 ohms. And then you should have half of that from 1 to 2 and half of that from 2 to 3 when you measure it in the center, and that's how you center it. Okay, always test on manual range. Now, there's one more caution, very, very big caution, very big caution. You must clock the potentiometer. In other words, the manufacturer will tell you, make sure the bucket is down Make sure the bucket is level. Make sure the bucket is flat. When you swap the potentiometer, make sure the potentiometer is in the 12 o'clock position with the slot centered before you tighten the adjustment. Because if you don't do that, then this machine will be here, but the computer will think it's somewhere else. And as soon as you turn the key on and start it, this bucket's going to go it's going to run into stuff and it's bad. It's very bad. I've been there once. I don't ever want to be there again. Okay? 
So these have to be clocked before you install them. Don't just throw it in there. Um, if nothing else, take a digital photo of the one you're taking out so you know how to put the new one in. And always check that slot position right there. That's the most important part right there. This, this slot position right here is critical. Okay, make sure you check that slot position. And that's it. So, rheostat potentiometer, basic information. This is how they work. And that's how you test them. Okay. All right, now I'm going to actually show you how to do this so that you can actually see it work. And use a meter, and I'll teach it to you, and you can actually build this little rig, and it's kind of cool, and you can do it in shop with not a lot of effort.